Thanks for joining us this week. I'm Tim Stott and I'll be hosting today's program. Today we'll be joined by um, MF Global Senior Market Strategist, Tim Haberkorn. Tim will continue his webinar series with a discussion on how to execute the trading plan and what, um, I'm sorry, how to execute the trading plan that he helped his attendees develop last week. If you'd like to ask questions during the presentation, please use the message box on the right hand side of your screen. Today's webinar is part of our ongoing effort to educate investors and traders about futures. And if you'd like to be notified about similar events, please register at the link you see on the screen. You can also stay in touch with MF Global through Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Please feel free to check out our archived webinars at our blog at letstalkfutures.com. Especially if you missed Tim's webinar last week, it will pertain somewhat to this webinar as well, so you want to go back and check that out. And you can also subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Like I said, Tim is a senior market strategist, and if you're interested in trading futures with him, we do have a special offer of half-off commissions for 30 days when you open a new account. Please keep in mind that today's webinar takes place at a specific time and is not in any opinions or recommendations given by Tim can be changed without notice at any time. Futures trading involves substantial risk of loss and therefore is not suitable for all investors. And of course, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. If you have any questions, please use the question box in the right-hand corner. Um, Tim will answer questions at the end of the presentation. If Tim doesn't get a particular question, we do ask that you jot down his phone number and email here, and he can help you out going forward. This webinar will be archived again on Let's Talk Futures blog. On that note, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Tim. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate everything. Um, welcome, everyone, to today's webinar. Um, educational uh, series here. Uh, again, we're, what we're doing here is we're going over uh, basically trading 101, but you know, not just for someone who's new to this, someone who's uh, even been who's been trading for some time and who uh, just needs a refresher or needs to reorganize. Uh, to better uh, to better help themselves in the market. Uh, last week, I had uh, we went over you know the trading plan and different points to the trading plan. And um, I have to real quick here. In the at the end of this, there's three slides that are summaries, somewhat of uh, of last week's. I guess of a little th of something sort of a foul. Uh, I was actually. I was I was out of the office a day and a half. I was I was sick with the flu, but um, I definitely uh, got a lot of emails about it. And uh, thank you. And I will be responding back to everybody um, here very soon in the next day or so. Because um, I definitely uh, encourage you to, to touch base uh, if you do have any questions, and if you look if you're looking for any assistance, uh, whatever it may be, uh, with the markets here, I'm be glad to help you. Um, again, let's get started here. The uh, Today's educational webinar is part two of the first series, and it's, ex it's uh, executing your trading plan. Um, let me get into it here, get to the next slide for you. Some of the focus points, once you have your trading plan and you have it built, and again, like a business plan, a trading plan, you have your foundation is what we're looking to get started right off the bat. After your foundation is built, you know, you, you're going to make changes. You're going to remodel it a little bit. You're going to... You're gonna you're gonna change a few of the uh, plans, so it's not, might not show up. It, it's not going to be the exact plan that you make uh, the day before. You know, it's not going to be set in stone, and then you start trading, and there you go. Um, some of the focal points, though, on this plan is, or executing your trading plan. In more depth, we're going to get into is, you know, when you know, how do you focus part of your trading plan, and how do you focus it to organize yourself for to getting when you get in the market. You want to develop uh, a sound uh, foundation of uh, necessary, you know, things and points that you must look at before you decide to get into a trade. No one should just jump into a trade. Just look at a screen, look at the markets, and get the uh, itch to say, "Oh my God, I'm missing something," or "Or this is moving. I heard this on TV. I got to jump in." That's the worst thing to do. If you notice on TV. A lot of the people will speak in a lot of TV on CNBC or Bloomberg. A lot of a lot of publications that you read, they'll tell you that hey, like the last past couple of days, buy gold, buy silver, do this. 
No one gives you any exact points, entry points, exit points, what's your risk. You know, I'm not saying what's your risk for the, because they have to. I'm saying every trade you get into, you should know the point you're looking to get in at, and you should know, hey, this is what I'm looking to risk on the trade. I'm not looking to risk past this. So bottom line, no, very few places are gonna, you're going to get that type of uh, service to where you're going to get the exact thing handed out for you. That's why you need a trading plan. Um, I have a trading plan that I use myself. And, you know, I work with all self-directed clients, um, again, and uh, assist them, you know, and with uh, keeping in mind and keeping up to their plan. So one of the, let me get back on track here. One of the other things we're going to be looking at is when you're in the market, uh, when to get out of the market. Also, I want to cover, you know, picking your trades, you know, by order of your plan. Uh, and the last is stick to your plan, no excuses. Um, again, as we go throughout the uh, PowerPoint slides, you know, we'll, we'll touch on we'll touch on all of them here in a little bit. Um, let me get started here at the next slide here for you one sec. So first one is getting in the market. Um, as always, when you sit down in front of the screens, we trade, we trade now online, so we trade in front of a computer. Um, unless you're sitting on the floor, then it's a completely different trading plan that your hand should be building, which is momentum, which probably won't be uh, dated, won't be around too much longer. But going forward, most of you, 99% of you, uh, if not all of you, Definitely, you're trading on, on the screen technically. So you need to have a technical plan. You need to have a plan that is built for that type of trading. You need to gear everything for what it is. Um, the, the, when, you're, when you're looking to get into the market, though, when you're looking to build the part as far as what are your rules and what are your restrictions as far as when you get into the market, what do you need to do on a, if it's a daily basis, if you're trading daily, if it's weekly, if it's monthly, yearly, however you have your your, your trading, you know, divvied up, you gotta you want to have a plan for when you're ready to get into the market. So if you're a daily trader, you want to have you no know, in the morning. You want to look at what what are the what are the numbers coming out today? Do we have inventory numbers for the energies every Wednesday at 9:30? Unless there's a holiday, it's it could be pushed back. To, uh, it could be pushed up to Thursday. Do we have uh, the Fed? Does the Fed have anything coming out today? Are there any, is Bernanke, this morning, Bernanke spoke today. Uh, that's something where you'd want to know um, going into the day. Uh, you you want to know because when you're trying to get into certain markets, you don't want to get into the market not knowing what time certain things are happening. And then all of a sudden, everything that you had thought you were looking at is just completely gone upside down and gone the other way. It will happen. It happens to everyone. There's no matter how well you can organize yourself, the market is is never gonna have never gonna have continue to be the same pattern. So, obviously, in the, any way possible you could structure your entry entry of getting into tra any trade specific trade, you want to have as many cards on your side as possible. Uh, again, shorter term trades. You're gonna look at. I'm a technical guy. I look at the charts. I trade by charts. Um, again, I'm looking, I'm looking back at what has happened. Now, the price points for getting in. What that means specifically, and what I'm trying to target here and explain to you guys is that, let's say I'm looking at gold, and I say, you know what, I like gold. I like gold. I like buying gold. You know, versus just saying, hey, buy gold, get in. No, that's not how I'm going to do it. I'm going to look at the market. If, if I think, from looking at the chart, if I can see from drawing trend lines or just studying the pattern of the chart and just looking at different um, different charts on the same chart. So, for example, if it was a gold, looking at the 60-minute, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, uh, historic, you know, going back in my previous notes, just looking at overall how things have been going, I'm going to develop spots where I think are going to be good spots to buy or good spots I think we'll have to get into the market. Now, the point of of getting in is very important because like I, I, I want to stress this, you know, you don't want to just jump into a trade. You want to get into a trade. And when you get into that trade, you want to get in because you want to always focus on risk and risk should be something that you're very, that you keep very, very closely uh, by and always remember when you're getting into a trade, you should base a lot of your entries on 
as far as seeing your risk and seeing on that chart where, okay, I see the market, I think it's going to come down to this point and this is where I want to buy. Well, you know, if it comes down to the spot where you're looking to buy, you buy there. Well, you know, if it keeps on going, because you waited for, you had, you waited for a spot, if it keeps on going, you should know where your risk is at. And again, your plan should entitle what your risk is. Your risk is not going to be set in stone every single trade. That's why I like to say three, four, five percent. Generally, five percent would be a decent number to have, uh, you know, per day of risk per your, per your portfolio. But when you generally find that either buy order to get in the market or if you're selling to get in the market on a futures contract, you want to do that based around what's a good spot, where am I going to risk? Um, and keep that risk to a minimum. Um, it's so important. It's, it's the most important part of trading. Uh, I can't, exp I could do, and I will be doing multiple webinars on risk and how to handle risk. And you'll see in more depth when we hit those notes uh, of what more ways to get in and to manage your risk. But that's the biggest, that's the biggest problem I see with, with traders and uh, with clients of mine. You know, they, some have their own methods of doing it. And, and some people depend on my calls to get in the market. And, you know, again, I'm very risk orientated and people will, will fight even though they, they don't know what's going on because they don't want to, they don't want to be out. You got to understand if the trade is not meant right. If it's not meant to work out, you want to be out as soon as possible. You don't want to wait on it and wait and wait. So again, always know your risk every time you're picking into that trade. Again, if you see the trend, the profits will come. Um, it comes into focus, focusing on fundamentals and technicals. That just sort of wraps everything up. You want to know a lot of the, you want to know the uh, numbers coming out for the day. You want to know your technical uh, spots of where you're getting in the market, you know, and then you go in and you execute. You execute the trade and you get in and hopefully you can trade it through and uh, end up uh, making money in the market. Let's get to the next slide here. Now, there's a big difference for someone who's doing short-term trading versus long-term trading. And again, you could take those two right there. Right there. You could say short-term trading could be a day, could be a two days, could be a week, could be uh, et cetera. Long-term could be, uh, for some people, it could be two days. For some people, it could be two weeks. Uh, you know, I have long-term trades that are on, that I've had on since 08 that go into 2015. Uh, and I have trades going to 2017. So those are long-term trades. But again, you want to define what your trade is and what, your, what, your, what, is, what, your, what are you looking to accomplish on this trade. So let's go real quick to short-term trades. Just to recap, you know, determine your entry around your risk. We touched on that. Um, your your short-term trade should have a risk-reward in sight. Touched on that. Adapt your plan around trend and profit. So... Adapting your plan, again, I said the plan will, your trading plan will always, uh, will, will always be changing, I guess, because the markets are always changing. But if you have to adapt your risk, the amount you're risking on per trade, because you find yourself getting stopped out more, or you find yourself just not pick, getting in at the right spots where you're getting in too loose, you need to adapt things in your plan. And that's where, that's where things you're always going to be adapting in your short-term trading. Um, but the one key thing is you always want to stick to a general overall daily risk. And that's overall um, one of the, I think, the biggest parts. Again, I can't you'll probably hear me say it another 10 more times in here, but <laughs> let's get down to the next slide here. Um, the foundation of the trade. OK, so I'm going to I'm going to touch about specifically, let's say uh, if I had a trading plan and uh, somebody asked me to, to, throw, uh, to tell them exactly what what I'm looking at a week and ahead or two weeks and ahead or going forward for the quarter and uh, what I'm, where am I going to trade at? So here's an example, trading crude oil, uh, late Tuesday, early Wednesday around the number. So Wednesday morning, 9.30 a.m. Central Time, uh, we have the oil inventory, the uh, distillants and the gasoline numbers that come out pending the holidays, but not most of the time it's on Wednesday at 9.30. One, Two, two trades that I t generally look at, and this is not every Tuesday and Wednesday, but there's patterns that I recognize in the market that I tend to attack and try and pull money out of. Mm -hmm. And the first one would be, and they're all, first of all, they're all centered around that number, and specifically the 930 number. 
So if I had to come up and say specifically with a plan, if I had a, a, the, the pattern in the chart, if I noticed on Tuesday when the oil market closed in the pit towards the end of the electronic, the market had, had sold off here a little bit, or if we were down pretty much throughout the day on Tuesday, and then towards the close it had leveled out or it, you know, it sort of showed us some sort of little bit of a bottom, I'm going to buy Tuesday night because normally going into the crude oil number, not all the time, but I'm noticing when there's certain setups that by the time we get in on Wednesday, by the time Wednesday morning rolls around, like let's say 7.45, 8 o'clock central time in the morning, I notice the market has gone up 80 cents to a dollar. So I'm going to play that opportunity overnight. Um, again, if, that, if the market on Tuesday closed and give you that, that nice buy at a lower price, hey, take a stab, check it out if the formation is right. But that's when I'm going to be trading. And since I'm buying low, I don't need to keep give, I don't need to give it all this risk because I'm already trying to get it at a decent spot. Matter of fact, I might be doing what's called bottom fishing, where let's say the low was at, and this is hypothetical prices, not off today's markets, but let's say the market closed at $90 and I wanted to buy into the market. I might try and say, I'm going to put an order at $89.75 to buy overnight and um, see if I can get, see if I can grab the, uh, if I can get filled there and then come out uh, of the market Wednesday morning. Now, let's say even on Wednesday morning, I might look at the, I might look at the crude oil and say, okay, crude oil number comes out at 930 central time. I don't want to, I don't want to, be in the market as a day trade, getting in on that number and then in the mix of the number, trying to have my plan work out because it's going to be thrown into chaos. The number is just a purely, uh, if it's positive or negative, either way, this is how I look at the number. How I look at the number when I'm trading on Wednesday is I don't care what it does. I don't care if, it, if it's a draw or if it's a build. Most of the time, it never follows what it's supposed to do. There's expectations, of course, but you know what? I don't, it's too much information for me. I really don't care. I'm looking at the technicals. I'm waiting about a minute to two minutes after. It could be 30 seconds. It could be five minutes. It could be 10 minutes after that number comes out. But usually, I can see a short-term trade come in at most of almost every crew number, except maybe not all of them, because sometimes you could have uncertain situations come up. Uh, Come up, but in the general uh, range of what typical what we typically see, I will uh, look for uh, an arbitrage opportunity thrown off from the number and try and get in and attack that. That's going to be my specific weekly trade. That's what I'm going to go for. Picking something like that and sticking to certain situations that develop in the market that allow you to go in the market and trade out your plan. That's something where specifically if you need help with too. Uh, or if you want me to sort of, you know, like to you know talk about it, and maybe I, I can send you a chart and show you specifically, uh, you know, as it develops live, and uh, I can show you how I go about it. Um, let's go. Down, let's go down to the next uh, slide here. One sec here. Okay. Next next part I'm going to talk about is long term trades. If you have a plan and your plan, if you're building a trading plan for long term trades. You want to gear it towards the long-term trades. We just talked about short-term trades. Long-term trades, are you a seasonal trader? Are you a situational trader? Are you hedging in some sort of matter? I have clients to do a trade every type of way you could possibly think. Some of them I have no idea where they're coming from, but I do my best to help them. But I'll tell you, number one, the seasonal is someone who might be looking at the energies. And when we're going into let's say December, Jan more towards January, we noticed energies, crude oil, and uh, our Bob should go, you know, should go, but it's case by case, it could, it could change, but they should go higher because we're, we're, gonna, we're going into the future, which is the summer driving season, and we're gonna see a pickup in oil in our Bob, which is gasoline prices. So generally, that's a seasonal trade. I have clients who come in and for the past couple of years, we specifically do our Bob calls every year, come in second to the last week of the year, get set up, and then we start scouting out our opportunities a couple months out. We look, we're looking at April. We're looking at May. We're not looking to spend over a certain amount, but we're not looking to, you know, we're looking to put the money in to position us, you know, close to the market, fairly 
or it's close to where it's at with a call, almost in the money, and then we're looking to ride it out. Sometimes we, last year actually, we wrote it out within a week and we were double our money. Um, the year before, we actually, every year we've doubled or tripled our money. Um, some took longer than the other, but that was a seasonal trade. A situational trade, if you're building your, your portfolio for futures trading around situational trading, might entitle a special situation in the, uh, in the market. For example, um, right now, everything seems to be down in the dumps. Uh, if it's anywhere with uh, dealing with America, the Fed, uh, anywhere in the U.S., or with the Eurozone, um, you know, people are looking for this market, this sell-off. That's their key for that long-term trade. They want to go in. They're going to start buying this situation, buying calls on these dips. They might be buying futures. They'll, they'll position themselves around it to handle the situation at hand. Now, when you're trading in this nature, if that risk of 5% obviously changes a little bit, and that, that's where your plan, you've got to adjust your plan appropriately for what you're doing. So that's something where case-by-case -case basis, I would be glad to help you with uh, and help you build a plan, solid plan to handle any sort of situational trade. But again, you've got to adjust yourself because you could take on or incur uh, risk the first couple of days, first couple of weeks. Hopefully, you don't have to take that much heat. But if you do, you, you might have to see the situation out. So you should understand everything that uh, entitles it. Generally, I would say start out simple. You build a base. You build as it grows. Hedging, long or long-term strategy. That's a different trading plan altogether. Again, in another time, I will touch on the hedging uh, hedging trading plans, but specifically if someone's hedging, I almost, almost all my clients, not, a, not all of them, but most of them, they do, they have hedging and they do hedging um, overall with the, in the S&P market. For example, most recently, the stock market has just gotten hammered, obviously, and over the past couple of years, we've, we've had some pretty big dips. Well, clients, they have mutual funds, they have stock accounts, they have all these other investments, they need to protect them. So what, what we do is we take overall what they're sort of vested in the market and develop appropriate hedge for them. And we execute that and with, uh, S &P, with the S&P market. It could be a simple one or two calls. It could be a, a future, at certain, selling futures at certain points. But we're hedging overall anything in the other accounts. Uh, so when they pull back at how they did, they uh, didn't take quite a, uh, as big as a lump as they could have without the hedge on. So that's a specific strategy where I could help you out with if you're looking to uh, look in more depth, learn about it. Um, different risk management here. Uh, formulate your risk, you balance your report portfolio, see it through. Long-term means long-term. So real quick here, because we've talked about a few of these, you know, formulate your risk, you know, don't, try and change or guess or say, oh, I'll move my risk, this trade, I'll go here or here. Don't do it. If you do it, you're bound to, you're, you're bound to it's not going to turn out well. Uh, hopefully I'm, I'm wrong and hopefully you can find a way to redo it but, or to go around it and find a, another successful way. But um, you don't want to disregard the risk. It's very important. Um, rebalancing your, po your portfolio. Um, obviously, if you're, mainly doing short-term trading, and then, you know, you want to maybe diverse or build a, build it into a little bit more than just short-term risk. You want to go and do some longer-term plays. Maybe you're looking at um, an inflationary-type hedge into crude oil, going out to 2015 with calls, spreading it, Any, uh, going out with gold flour or silver, going out five years in December. You want to buy it, you want to rebalance it. Then what you're going to be doing is taking – putting a chunk, chunk of the account, the value, the percentage of the account into, into purchasing these options. Or if you choose another way on how to do it, you still want to make, make sure you don't mix up the risk that you're risking on that specific play versus the risk that you use on your uh, short-term trades. You want to make sure you're very clear cut with that. Um, long-term means long-term again and see it through. I can't tell you how many times people end up uh, losing on trades because they make a they take a long-term trade and they decide to change their mind and make it a short-term trade 
or vice versa. That's not having a plan. That's not seeing things through. I would say about 99% of the time that I've seen that, it actually ended up working out the original way as the person had, had thought it was, uh, but they cut themselves short or they ended up taking a loss because they didn't give themselves the time. Uh, trade the trend. Trade the tr uh, trend. Do not try to ch uh, change or challenge the trend. Look at the market that you're in and, 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 trade, and, and trade with the market. This is a, uh, also one of, one of the top points that you should really focus on. Right now, we're in very volatile markets. You're not, gonna, you're not trying to uh, trade like, tra like we're in trends. Uh, you're, not trying to, um, you're not trying to look for long-term, put on futures at certain points um, in specific markets and say, okay, we're gonna have a nice long trend. No, we are in choppy markets. We're in, this is volatility to the T. You, you are single-handedly, it's going to be very hard for you to change that on your own by, by trading. And most likely, if you're going to try and go against the trend or challenge it, you're going to lose. And that, that's, that single-handedly chews up probably most of the money within the overall marketplace because people want to take a market and change it and try and make it into something that it's not. If it's volatile, make sure your, your trading plan accommodates volatile markets. If we're in markets that are the opposite, then you, you change it. You, you, you change it as the markets because they will always change. They're, they're never going to be the same, but generally, you'll certain times you'll have volatility versus other times. That's something to focus on when you're building your trading plan also. Uh, humans need to touch fire before they learn. Same principle goes for trading. Um, you know, this is just to go and coincide with risk. Um, you know, you, you, some people, most people are going to go and they're going to try and extend their risk. They're going to go outside the plan, their comfort zone, because they feel they have something uh, on a specific trade. Well, you know, it, it's, it's going to bite you. It's going to bite you in the butt, and it, 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 hopefully it's not bad. But you gotta, you, you got to stick with your risk, and hopefully you don't have to experience losing an excessive amount of money before you realize that I, I have no risk control in my trading and something needs to be fixed. Um, that's when you know you absolutely need a trading plan. Um, some of the excuses, and this is just, this is not geared at anybody specifically, but if you, if you hear yourself or if you notice that you're, make, you're saying these things or making mistakes or whatever, you know, it's, you're not watching your risk. You're not planned well enough. And you, you know what? You, you, you need some focus. You need to refocus. I, as a trader myself, I have a mentor I talk to, and all the time we're talking markets. Uh, I could hands down be glad to work with any one of you guys if you need something like that to help you keep you on, in line with what you're trying to do. The key is when you have a mentor and you're trading, it's not for someone to chime in and throw all this information at you and throw you off track. It's someone to keep you on track. It's someone to, to make sure you're hitting your goals and you're sticking to your plan. Um, but if you're if you're tr if you're trading wildly and if you keep saying if the market if you're in a trade and it's against you and you say oh it came out of nowhere you know it didn't come out of nowhere I mean the market's going to move we all know that you know wake up you need to have your risk stick to your risk uh, if you say oh I didn't have time I didn't look at the markets well then don't be in the market if you don't have time for it then you donate your money to a charity but do not do not go into the market with there's another reason not to go in with a pl uh, plan. If you're looking at a trade and it's against you and you keep saying, oh, it'll come back, it'll come back. I've been there. We've all been there. Those, it's the worst, worst feeling and you're looking at a chart and you're thinking, oh, it's going to come back. Oh, come on. Guess what? It, it, you should be out of the trade the first time you say that. You should, be, you should get out, rebalance, wait for the, uh, the next trade, wait for the next setup, but stop wasting your time and do not waste any more money if you uh, don't know what's going on or if you don't have a grasp of what's going on in the market. You know, give it some more time. If you uh, if you end up trading like that, it probably this probably looks familiar to you. Uh, somebody trading without a plan, with uh, their head about to explode. Uh, I appreciate everybody showing up today. I could obviously talk here for hours and hours. Um, the last three slides, and again, you can download these. It goes a little bit into uh, last week some of the basis of tr the trading plan, like the guts. It's just three slides here. And it just talks, talks and uh, explains uh, overall the general, literally why you need one and what should be included and uh, 
just gives you a little bit, a couple more pointers, I guess, if you're trying to build one or design one. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me uh, or contact me, uh, and I can uh, help you out individually. Again, um, I, my phone number here, my email is going to be posted here at the end, uh, the last slide, and you can use those to contact me. I will be here uh, all week, and I will be here uh, the next week and so on. So. I'd be glad to help you out if you need any help or if you need any specific help building it. Everybody have a great day, and we'll see you next week. Oh, we have a few questions here.